game one between VSG and C9 Casters. Let's go. And go we shall. And again, happy birthday over to Kiway. We'll see if she's got the birthday buff. Welcome to the Casters desk. It's me, nice to join alongside Mirko to bring you this matchup, the West versus West, the rise of emerging regions here, of course, as we jump into the land of Don for this first game of the best of three. Mirko, how are we feeling, man? What do we think of the lineups here for both these Welcome teams? Interesting for C9 especially. Very interesting, man. I mean, hey, Brock in the mid lane. We technically did see this already. On, I mean, on Ashley yesterday, right? In the tiebreaker. Yeah. There's an Angela paired up together with the Grok. That's the usual combo. I've never seen the Grok paired up with the Lolita. At least it's been a while. Now we've got, I guess we get to see. Clear is pretty good. Ashley. QC. Not the concussive blast. So it is truly going to be a Grok mid. They're going yeah. to utilize. My question is, do they go damage? Oh, like the damage build for the Grok? Mm -hmm. Good, good, actually. Good question. Uh, and I think part of it, too, is the way the way that I see it, because, you know, we were in the mid cast when they had the tiebreaker game, but Ashley on that Grok did play a pivotal role in them turning that game around. A lot of poke here already early on. And the one thing that they do have to be careful for is Synchro on this pick. You know, time and time again, we've seen uh, debut picks, as Eternal like to call it, the DOD, right? The day of debuts is what it's <laughs> been up to this point. And so far, even with the looks, you have to respect the damage. You have to respect those Chaos Bolts one, once she starts to especially lock in. I, even the first item, you know, already is actually quite a big power spike. And I think, you know, if you go the tanky route, which is what we're seeing here, at least with Ashley and Zaya, it could work. It could be enough to be that stalwart for them. But then where are you relying on that damage? Exactly. Panda to farm up. Oh, hold on. It's not damage. Nicolette's still holding on to the sword. We'll be able to use the enhanced sword. Out jewel. Gonna be caught now. Minin able to dash in front. Had to oh. fight. Appearance time. Getting two members. First blood picked up. Ashley. The OT to get it down. Oh my god. Minin. Double kill. Picking it up top. I'm surprised it's been a while. I mean, yes, I know Yu Zhang popped up yesterday some, but you kind of get refreshed when you look at this STC replay on why Yu Zhang is such a good pick. Look at the look at the dive into the petrify, Instant. and then the essence, man. Oh. On point, plus the War Cry emblem. You know, so that little bit of boost really does help uh, kind of capitalize on those kills, and that's what I was saying. You know, when you go back to C9's lineup, it's like you have to wait for your damage. Right now, it's just going to be Nicolette. You know, we've seen this so much with the Julian pick, especially in the jungle. But you, you kind of lack damage. You sacrifice it for that durability, for that front line. And so sometimes it might just be for a VSG to be like, you know what, let's just fight. Let's just duke it out. We have the lineup for it. And then at the whole time, you just let Rion farm up. It's the same for Cloud9, really. I mean, if we take a look at the play styles of Cloud9 throughout this tournament so far in the group stages, and even in the tiebreaker, Panda's just been given carry all the time. <laughs> she loves playing this carry, and uh, it's all about really non-laning for the carry. She's a really good, uh, carry is a really good pick to just non-lane. You're just there, farm up, wow, charge on the Kyoe with enhanced chain as well. But they're unable to find enough damage. Exia rotates oh, no. over, Kyoe's like, yeah, nah, you're not gonna be able to dish out enough damage. She uses the Lycan Pounce offensively. Meanwhile, up top, Minion gonna be able to dodge away from the Enhanced Chain. With the Fear Dive gonna be walled down. Good Petrify in Black Dragon form as well, but will be slashed from the skies. Exia, now with the Bulwark. Got a bit of damage. Synchro with the damage. Now it's Gaily with a knockup. It's only on to Exia, canceling out the Nuna Blast. Ooh. Nicolette coming in with the Enhanced Sword. Finding the gap closer to get Synchro Gaily. They want more. Going back, trying to deal some damage. Back again, immobilized, and the sword once more. Exia picks up the kill this time to get Cloud9 in the lead. Okay. All right. They got some fight in them. They have some damage, too. It took them a little bit longer, of course. But great usage of that. They might still just put the pressure here on this side of the jungle. Uh -oh. And, okay, Minun's going to be fine. But, yeah, this is not actually the way that team fight went. It almost looked like they were a little bit off, a little off-synchronized. But then they pulled on through for that skirmish for that team fight up top, able to capitalize on a couple kills. Relatively still even, but here we go. Now the objective for the taking here. They're going to go ahead and start this one up, of course. But we'll see if this is going to be C9's turtle in their hands. Gaily with a knock-up. Exia still able Reset. Just dash away, Nicolette back on the orange buff. And yeah, it's a reset, but VSG want to take this time to actually go for it. Yeah, right now, too. Gaily doesn't have the Minoyan's Fury just yet. Might be back up. That might be Warax. why they're stalling this out. Warax picked up now for Minoon. Has the Petrify available. They're going to start it up. I'm not sure what C9 wants to do. 
Good barrier down. Ashley going in with a wild charge. Able to find a stun, but still Kiyoe finds it. Good brilliance to slow her down. Minion find the barrier side and the petrify. But not to anyone. Not just yet. Numenon blast. And then Kiyoe, Nicolette jumping in and Hash Chain knocking two members up. But Kaylee's still going to be able to survive. Jewel pops into vengeance right now. Synchro does damage with the chaos. And man, that's a lot of damage. Jewel. Shredded, obliterated, down. That's what I was talking about, you know, the damage early on. Still going, though. Re-engage. Let's flicker out from Synchro. Exia is still able to find the kill. Now Kiyoe joining the fight with Rian. Come in and again, Kiyoe with Lycan form. Exia to be caught blazing away from Rian. Able to dish out enough damage to take Exia. But then the blazing duet gets canceled by Nicolette's enhanced chain. And Rian is still staying in his mid lane, but won't be able to get any hits onto that turret. This is going to be a battle, man. You know, and I, I hope that this series does go the full distance. You know, the three games that we're hoping for, because so far... Ooh. Oh, hold on. Minun? Is she going to be able to get away from this? No. <laughs> Ashley didn't even need to do that, but that was just for good measure. Goes in with a wild charge. Mm -hmm. Kill secured there, of course, for the team now. And that's what I was saying, you know, for the most part, for these two teams, very even on the way they want to fight. It's just now I'm kind of wondering, all right, where is that spike for both of the teams here in terms of the power spike? You already saw that damage coming out from Synchro this early on. So, you know, for Cloud9, is it going to happen faster? Duel in trouble, though, might be. Vengeance is going to be at back up in one second. She does pop in the ultimate, doesn't use the Vengeance just yet, but VSG get a few good hits on the turret. So it's Cloud9, though, who are leading in terms of structures. And we get a good look at the items. That's a Holy Crystal Rush for yeah. Nicolette. Holy Crystal Rush going to be there. Golden Staff picked up by Panda. And that's the thing. You got Glowing Wand and then the Arcane Boots. That penetration is what made Synchro hurt so much. There's the Holy Crystal locked in. A lot of this, the first item was being already picked up here. DHS as well for Rian. She's been able to farm up pretty well, you know, for the most part. And we saw her rotate really well up to that fight earlier on in the mid lane. And so that's something that Cloud9 now has to be careful of, especially with those blazing duets, utilizing the Bulwark when they have it, or even the Guardian's Barrier from Ashley. They have a couple things in mind that they can utilize when it comes to those team fights. But now it's up. Turtle, last one of the game here. If either team does commit to this, but it looks like they're going to go ahead. C9 gets control of the area, but still, look at this, on the way. Rian going to be assassinated. Nicolette finding the solo kill and the assassination onto Rian. That's big. That's massive. That's not just big. A good barrier. Exia rotating forward again. Putting the bulwark down. Really just denying any sort of retaliation. VSG. Even down a member. Whoa. Ashley. Into the wall. Charged them without blast. Stunning them in. A good minus fury from Kaylee. Turns it around. Kiyoi now with a like inform. Deals some damage back again. Has a like and pounce. Goes on title. Jewel Whoa. walks in. Panda gets the fadeaway kill. And again. Cloud9, they get the better response. Cloud9 gets the response. Now they're going to go for the turtle, but they are quite low. Kaylee has the information here. Synchro, and now Rion's joining this fight, but too late, too little. Kaylee will get away with her life, but the, the turtle secured for Cloud9. What a setup in the mid lane from Ashley. Let's take a look at the STC replay wow. here. Keep an eye. There it Ooh. is. Good wild charge ultimate, and then even the Numenon Blast. And, you know, either way, when you're looking at this team fight unfold, the same can be said. The same can happen even later on with yeah. the lineup that VSG has. That's something that's going to be crucial here. That team fight was definitely saved by Gailey there because Gailey, she popped in. Hold up. Gailey, just as I mentioned her, you know, I thought the right. Caster Curse was going to strike instantly. <laughs> but yeah, Gailey pops in him in his fury right as the Illuminati Blast was going to connect onto all of the members. So if she didn't do that, that would have been probably yeah. a wipe for Cloud9. Gailey able to pop into Minus Fury in time, and that's what saved them in that team fight. Minotaur's probably been, I, I feel like, one of the best heroes so far. Yeah. Not just here in MWI, but even for MSE. Such a such a crucial pick for a lot of teams to utilize. All rounder. Minoyan's Fury, the way that it works, works great here. Mid lane, though, still going to be the focus as both these teams working on the tier ones. And I'm just wondering, too, if there's enough damage potential already for Panda as she picks up the DHS right on a Q. Oh. oh, hold on. Ashley with a part of nature. Get out of CC, but not out of damage. Good minus fury again. Oh, you can see that damage pile up as well from Panda on the carry. Jumping forward, but now without the ultimate. Now on cooldown. Nicolette's doing a good job, by the way. Just in her own world, in her own island up top. But that's good on the Julian. You want to try to isolate some of these members. Mm -hmm. And the damage is it's really starting to hurt. You can see even just the chain there. Taking Rian. 
taking that much HP from Rian. Yeah, both both gold laners pretty much at this point are where they need to be. Golden Snap also picked up for Rian. And, you know, that's where, again, as we get ready for this Lord, it's up in five seconds here. The way you utilize these these setups with CC potential once Gaily has it, Minoe and Fury, and even the Dragon form, as long as Cloud9 plays against that, and vice versa, as long as they dodge that wild charge setup we saw earlier from Ashley, they're going to be good. But look how fast Cloud9's doing the Lord here. Rian doesn't seem to be concerned there. Nicolette will be able to secure it there. That's a wild charge into the wall. Straight as Jewel goes in for a bit of damage onto Minin, but she's able to just sustain. But meanwhile, like I said, Rian up top, taking a page out of Nicolette's book. Mm -hmm. Last few fights. But now Nicolette will try to match that. Get spun in the bush. Rian utilizing the defensive battle mirror image to escape. Tier 2 turret for Lord. You know, Rian's probably like, oh, hold on. They're all in there, Zaya! Oh, still able to escape. Gaily gets a knock-up, but it's only on six seconds. Zaya! Fight. Now Panda jumps into him, now Blast's gonna be able to connect right there, but the Brilliance gets him out. Kiyoe, looking for the Lycan form initiation, but knows that it's gonna be a bit too risky to dive in all alone. C9 pop in the conceal. And take a look at Nicolette. That was a lot used. I mean, they still have the Lord to take care of, too, by the way. But Cloud9 knows that. They might just go ahead and try to get some turrets, of course, with this first one. Is it this Nicolette waiting for oh. She's going to get spotted out. Unfortunately, that's not going to happen for them. But they can still go for the play, at least in the mid lane. Get a couple tier twos if they can as well. Good thing that Nicolette did the work earlier on in the top side. But Lord will go down relatively quickly. Again, first one, it's already being taken care of by Rian. They want this tier one. Good knock up again. That's an enhanced into the back wall charge from Ashley. Getting them enough space to go for the tier one mid lane. Wow, with the first Lord in the bottom lane as well, those are some big minions crashing down onto the turret. A barrier placed down by Ashley. They will not be able to find anything else, but still, that's yeah. two tier twos with the first Lord. I, I feel like in, in a lot of the games that we've seen so far for MWI, this is the most kind of standard, if you will. It's kind of like this slow burn into that first Lord, because some games end. You know, you're already in the base after that first Lord take, but with these lineups, it's they got to be kind of more more calculated, I'd say, with how they approach those fights, how they approach those team fights, because it's almost like once everything is used, all that CC potential, then it's kind of like you got to back off. Uh, key item pick up here, too, for Panda. She gets the wind in nature now. She has that online to find Glaive for Synchro. So if you thought this, if she thought, if you thought she hurt earlier, now, now that she has Divine Glaive, it's going to hurt even Ashley, as tanky as she is, or Xaya, as tanky as she can be. And Jewel, I mean, even with the Thamus, you know, popping that Vengeance, jumping into the fight, you can see the build that she went to. You know, she's got good defense, but she's kind of like that extra front line. It's like, you are, you know, you already got the uh, Grok there full Looks like pretty much tank build, by the way. Uh, we were wondering exactly where she would go. And uh, you have three tanky frontliners. So jump in and then hope that that's enough to keep it together. Nicolette also picks up a Winter's Crown. This is why the Lunox is going to be increasingly more of a threat as we get into the later stage of the game because you have a lot of tanky frontliners, but hey, the Lunox actually thrives against yeah. those tanky frontliners. Can go and shred you down, especially, I think, after... The Divine Glaive. I mean, she might even go for Holy Crystal if she really wants to go for it. It's very greedy, but if you want that extra burst, if you want to get rid... Just go Big uh, Damn. Go Big Damn, exactly. Of these That's tanky it. frontliners. The, the main problem, I would say, for the Lunox, the Roger, and the Claude has been the fact that Exia's Guardian's Bulwark has been well-timed yeah. in these team fights. So, VSG, they've kind of lost a lot of uh, momentum every single team fight just based on Exia standing in their way with the Bulwark. Okay. Look at this, how careful they are to approach the Lord. They got the information. Nicolette's not even around here. Nope. And uh, Rian gives them that. She did take the purple, but this could be a chance for VSG to go ahead and play around the fact that Nicolette's way up top. And they might just go ahead and start this as quick as they can here. Let's go. Watch charge into the back line, fighting two members right there as Rian is able to dodge away from them. Now Blast Kaylee jumps in with a Miss Fury, but still, it's Synchro who finds the Lord. Rian with Blazing Duet now, but they're all going to be gunned down. Synchro very low, still able to survive as Minion will be the sacrificial lamb to get them out. Okay, they get the Lord, though. They get the Lord off of them. That might buy him a little more time. Down two members, though. Cloud Nine's going to go ahead and go for the Tier 2, possibly knock on these base turrets. You know, so is that enough? Is that enough value? They're going to have to defend against Whoa. this, though. 
Like and Pounce coming down to collect. Very, very low. Some crow jumps on the brilliance. Widow Crown just right there. Excited to be slain in the bottom side. Tier turret. X Panda now going 1v3. Scratched away by the birthday girl. Kiyoe with a double. And they still have a lord. Man, I. I was hoping Cloud9, you know, they would realize that they still had to deal with the Lord. But they go in, they try to get the turret. They do get the mid turret down, but at what cost? And now it's it's up to VSG. They're going to run it down mid here. Lord's still on the top side and still members down from Cloud9 here. They got to wait, try to keep them at bay. It's Jewel and Ashley for now, but it might be too late here. Oh. How can they buy enough time? Two base servers taken down, Jewel in the midst of it all, trying to tank it up, doesn't have the vengeance, that's Gailey again to knock them up. You can hear the drums once again as VSG secure game one. It's that victory song. You know, that's that birthday buff right there. And be, be, remember, man, like they, they watched that last Lord kind of dance or tango, so be it, but they knew. Nicolette's up top. We can give this a go grab it they grabbed the lord they lost a couple members and then it was like no guys they're gonna push it down mid let's just defend we still have our key components to turn the tide to turn that fight around <laughs> you can see birthday girl feeling pretty good about that of course because you know honestly at that point before that all happened it could have been anyone's game still it was relatively even for the majority of it but great performance there i know our experts have a lot to say to this so i'm gonna throw it to the bear bros out there in the studio break down the game for us guys the queens we'll do our best because there was a lot of action in that one as y'all mentioned it is a back and forth you could argue that there were some moments that really it looked like C9 was going to take it. This was a beautiful initiation. And then there were times where you say VSG could take it because that Lunox pick, pick is a uh, wow. Leo, we were both scratching our heads, but we're very excited to see how this draft would unfold in the game. Any thoughts that you want to mention or want to start off with? My last thoughts for the uh, matchup was all aggression versus a wall. Now we see clearly the sword and the shield. The shield can do so much, right? You're able to work with so much utility, work with so much CC and initiation. But at the end of the day, you got to find a way to finish the game. You got to strike that death blow. And VSG did all that beautifully. In under, in under 16 minutes, I, I could have sworn it was like 14 something because that's where the turning point happened, right at their defense, right when C9 was about to open the gates. Yeah, and I think it goes to show that so far here for this game number one, hasn't disappointed, we're already seeing surprises. Lunox in the mid lane, Grok in the mid, paired up with Lolita in the Rome. I can't believe this is where we at, uh, are at right now in our meta game. I love the creativity shown off here. And uh, one of the picks that I want to look uh, more into for VSG is now this Lunox mid. Uh, what does a Lunox mid bring to the table up against that C9 composition that we saw? It's just pure, unadulterated damage. There's a little bit of a filter that you got to go through. I'm talking about the early to mid game. But as soon as that early game where in synchro felt how aggressive c9 can get and again mind you she started the first seven eight minutes with already two deaths mm -hmm. that was a well-earned power spike that she hit yeah and uh, i felt this i don't know if you feel the same way like going up against a luna sometimes you don't even understand where the damage is coming from it is, is it from the brilliance is it when she's in in the darkening mode already so uh, i feel like there were times for c9 understandably so would leave the Lunox sort of like unchecked. Yes, early deaths, but in terms of the team fighting, it's hard to track the Lunox with so many things going on, especially with the Yuzong jumping on you. Yep, uh, jumping with you. Jump uh, yeah, think, yeah. Uh, to be honest, C9 did their best. C9 uh, could have won that game, honestly. Uh, they could have gotten right then and there, maybe penetrated and took it slow, ended at, I'd say, ideally 18, 19 minutes. Because again, they did not get the Lord, they did win a trade, uh, which was uh, the product of a slow turn. Because if you'll remember, Nicolette was very late to the party, but they eventually did get like a three or for three for one or two for one. Uh, but yeah, uh, just how smart VSG is when it comes to aggression and uh, engaging with the tools that they have. Yes. That's what put them over the top. That's what allowed for Synchro to get out of that early game rut 
and to turn it around. We're seeing the reactions of the ladies on your screen right now. There was one there. It was that one I wanted to say. A very animated reaction by Rian over there at the end of the game. You can see a little bit of the worry and the now uh, for C9 just having to talk about how to recalibrate because that fight in the end uh, was a little bit of an overextend right in front of the base of VSG. That was the moment you were saying they could have ended it or at least really control the game so that they'll be the ones to run away with it. PlayStation MVP, wonder who it is because VSG played like a well-oiled machine, but it is synchro with that Lunox. That's right, uh, a humble five KDA with 83% on kills, which is explained by the fact that in the early game, it was C9 running away with the small wins, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at the seven minute 30 second mark scores like four to six yeah. and net worth is relatively close but this was a time where in synchro had to tell herself you know what rian's also having it hard kiyoe isn't exactly getting the kills that she needs to to get her stacks on the sky piercer yeah. minun is jumping in but at the cost of her life as well it's gonna come down to this it, it's on me and it happened reptile it happened when Where's the damage coming from? I, I see the blazing duet. I see uh, Rian a little off. Yeah. But why are we all just melting? That's that's C9, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. Uh, the the collective. Uh, whoa. That's cool. I just realized that. That's synchro. That's synchro right there. I like that. I like that. Nice touch. And oh hey. Oh hello. She tried to go for high fives. I, I think we owe her a high five later on. Lunox. That's great Lunox. Yeah. She does. Lunox now though. Oh. Uh, then the question is. Is it a one-off? Is it now something that we feel like can continue to show up for other teams here? What's the verdict? I'd say it's a VSG special. There's a reason why they're the first to debut it. There's the reason why, uh, very specifically, they picked it into what C9 would eventually draft. Neither you or me were calling out the Lolita. Neither you or me were, I mean, I think I alluded to it when I say, XP Grok, no, you wouldn't. Nope, mid lane Grok. So, I think it was a specific tool for a specific situation yep. that they used beautifully. And there's a very specific situation we have here at the Esports World Cup MWI. It's something to do with keys getting crushed, and we have a specific tool for that. Over there in the Filipino broadcast way back in Nemesi, we call that Yasi. Maybe for here, we'll come up with a different name for, that, uh, for the press. But yeah, here's a key crushing interview that I got to do earlier. All right, I'm here with Team Falcons Vega. Congratulations! Thank wow. you. Very happy. There we go. <laughs> All right, so Melin, a tremendous performance in this series. How does it feel to crush your opponent's key? It's kind of sad, but also fascinating. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. So it's kind of sad and also motivating. Um, fascinating. Yeah. So sad yet fascinating how it feels to crush the key. So you're going to be going up against your rivals in Indonesia, Team Vitality. Uh, how are you feeling heading into that match? Um, I feel like... Um, want to be? Help uh, me. <laughs> We're just going to do our best. Yeah. 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 Just going to do your best. Okay, so uh, do you have any message that you want to say to Team Vitality? Um, good luck and have fun. <laughs> All right. Good luck, have fun, and once again, congratulations to Team Falcons Vega. Let's go. Thank you. Team Falcons Vega again, congratulations to them. And we're going to be seeing a lot more of that uh, throughout the run of MWI. We'll have, if I'm not mistaken, two more today it is just the nature of the competition now here's something that uh, cool that i love to do that we love to do here that you can probably guess of mwi we can go back to a very important moment leo got to pick one out what was that let's uh break it down shall we yes that's me breaking it down let me join you let's <laughs> throw it back to a moment uh in game about 7 33 uh this is where the game was relatively close check it out uh you'll notice that there's a big fight in mid, and this is as scrappy as it gets as a mid-game power spike. You'll notice that Rian just suffered an early death. The aforementioned Synchro take in the two early deaths as well. So again, the, 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 the narrative for VSG fans watching is 
this is difficult for us in the early game, right? And you'll see that trades are happening, Minun for Ashley. I think that's a trade that you would rather not take because Minun is a Yuzhong. Minun would like to keep fighting and Ashley's willing to die alongside a Roamer, Exia. But you go from there, the unimaginable happens. Kiyoe dies as well. So now you think of the remaining three, Gale, Synchro, and Rian. Funnily enough, you go to the end of the game uh, after this whole trade here. Look at that final clip. Remember the final clip. It's those three wreaking the most havoc. So they were the ones all holding out. And Kiyoe and Minun understood that eventually, if we got past this moment, if we got past the utility that C9 was playing with, their aggression via the two-way or three-way initiation, yeah. all would be well. And that's where they got to eventually at 15-11. 15, 15, 15 05, roughly around that time. There you go. So, around 15 minutes. again, despite VSG being a team for just what, a wee two months? Yeah. They know each other's timers, they know each other's pace. And they know that, hey, if we can trust the process and we walk into battle with the equipment and the tools that we need, we can get the dub. Yeah. And they, the dub they did get for game number one. Smash Punk now, uh, the draft. We are going to be heading into that in just a bit. Let's revisit it. The last two picks there were the Lunox and the Claude. So it seems like VSG, they, they changed things up. Usually when you see a Roger first pick, you say, okay, Roger is the priority. He's going to be the one carrying us. But then, yes, Kiyoe had an amazing game, but VSG switched it up. What happened was they ended up picking their main conditions in the end. And it seems like the first three picks ended up becoming just what you do or what you pick up to support those key heroes. Which is deceptive in its own way. These are all high tier picks. Yuzhong, Minotaur, and Roger. And Roger. You started with what would seem like your cores, and then eventually, again, it's all on Synchro. She was the MVP, the PlayStation MVP. She was up in there, dual sensing everything, yep. and she knew that, hey, I just need to keep my priorities straight. And eventually, this lineup of a Lolita, a Tams, and a Grok will melt before my feet. <laughs> Lolita Grok already hurts, but even the Tams is like, eh. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's an official voice line. It could be right. That's up me, because I, I used to play a lot of Tams when Tams. I was still an XP laner, and whenever there would be a pocket Lunox, you know, that just came up at the last pick. Eh. Yeah. <laughs> Back in the day, how many years ago was that? About two or three now. <laughs> So you're honest about that. Yeah, no, okay. I, I, it's in my past, my distant past. I am a juggler now. <laughs> what hero? Bane. <laughs> Let's see if that's going to show up in this draft here, because looking at these two, I was thinking, I wonder what other picks we might be able to see. I, I thought, wait, the Bane could have slotted in here somewhere with these two teams. And you mentioned sword and shield, right? With VSG more of the sword, C9 being more of the shield. It makes sense because the last pick that Lolita last pick for C9 literally was a shield. A bulwark. If a you bulwark. Will. And it shifted the entire dynamic of the draft for C9. But now C9 will be on the blue side. The dynamics will shift yet again. Who all can we expect for the first pick now that Jushin and surprisingly Valentino blue side taken away? All right. Given how much success C9 saw despite not getting the dub, I think they are on the same mindset. Midnight specifically is we attack Synchro. Yeah. And then they, I would assume, make the adjustment of maybe we don't fall for the Lunox so hard. Oh, all right. Let's see if the Lunox will still end up becoming a factor here. So Angela, the high, uh, yes, C9 are respecting Kiyoe, but at the same time, VSG, they're respecting power picks of uh, Nicolette. Earlier, we mentioned the Hayabusa, uh, excuse me, the Benedetta and the Julian being mm -hmm. pickups there for Kiyoe. For Nicolette, it's the Hayabusa uh, as one of her signature pickups in the jungle as well. Terizla taken out. What? Are, uh, whoa, I did not expect this. Ruby seems to be uh, the flavor of the tournament. Yeah. Like, she just seems to just fit into most lineups, whether you're in blue or in red, and can flex like nobody's business. Yeah, not even in MWI. Was one of the key conditions as to why SRG was able to de defeat Falcon's AP Brand in MSC was because they had the Ruby with them. That's right, which was played by MSC champions Humes and Kram. Oh. Very effectively. So here, you don't even know. You don't even know. Is it Jewel? <laughs> Ruby, Jewel. Or is it Exia? Or even, at this point, even Ashley. Like, mid lane Ruby? Mid lane Ruby? Or Ashley, Rome Ruby? At, the, at this point, it's... it's, it's 
one or the other. One or the other. Again, it's like prime Haji V Y. You know what I mean? Yeah, I got like, you. It's, I just, guess it's just whatever. Yeah, and that's, a, that's a strength in its own right. Yeah. And uh, I mean, we did talk about that as the draft started. VSG gets the Julian and the Minotaur C9. All right, this time they're really just going to mash up the Assassin Assassin duo. They pick up the Ling for Nicolette. If this turns up becoming a really great game for her, it's going to be Nicoling. Surprisingly enough. Uh, Three out of five. Thank you. Uh, at least I passed. Only four wins for the Ling. Yeah, it's been tough to be a Ling. Uh, Again, half of the teams in the groups are very damage-centric. Yeah. So when you're a Ling, you're not even afraid of just getting caught up by a CC or a trampoline. You're, you're afraid of just getting blasted. Yeah, just getting caught out. Uh, VSG will match the attack type of the carry. They go for dependable basic attack, fast basic attacks. DPS. With the Claude, DPS. So in terms of the bands here, again, you're going to be asking if you're VSG, I've, okay, the Lolita makes sense as a ban, but I feel like it's a bit of an overthink. It would not be out of the realm of possibility if they could just go Grok ban too. Just to, <laughs> just to clear it out, like, just okay. to really say, Let's no, you're not doing safe. that again. Just to be safe, right? Like, what uh, Ola is saying is that Ruby better go into the Rome, but so uh, be it. It's the Fatimus. Odd how these two teams are just willing to let their mid laners stick it through. Yeah. They're just saying, hey, yo, Synchro. Well, in this case, Ashley. Ashley. Just, just hold it down. We'll, yeah. we'll get to you. Yeah, just wait up. Just wait up. Hmm. C9. They can take away another EXP laner option. Hello, he's open. Hello, he's open. Hello, ye. Still is. She is. Hello, ye, Claude. Minotaur, Julian. Sounds like great picks for VSG, right? How? How is Lo Yi getting through? We saw Lo Yi in the previous series today. Yeah. Hmm. It feels like C9 saying we have the link anyway, so that whatever split push shenanigans or map presence will get equalized. It'll feel more like if VSG pick up the low E, it'll be reactionary to the fact of, oh, it's we open. need something to match it, and mm. it's open. Yeah. C9 wouldn't mind either way. It's just a sick pick at this point. It's not the best, not the worst. Yeah. She's reliable. Oh! Whoa. Haven't seen him in a while. That man is conditional if they pick him up. Yeah, no, who are you finding? Yeah. You can see in the face of his eyes, like, oh! <laughs> Wait, which, uh, well, what's the Lapu Lapu for? Is it a, it's a lane duel thing? Are is they it, expecting uh, the rubies going into the EXP? Is it, I don't know, a pre preemptive attack at the Farsa? I mean, she's still open? It could be. Well, with the entries, all of VSG, Farsa now uh, would seem uh, difficult. Yeah. They could go Kagu or something exactly. like Lilia. No, I think the Lapu Lapu took it over the edge. So yeah. The Julian and the Minotaur, it's a bad idea. Lapu Lapu, you better not. Yeah. Farsa, forget about it. Hmm. That's two picks. Uh, Lilia seems safe. Lilia's okay. Yeah. Lilia or the Kagura is what I'm vibing for. Oh, here it comes. Oh, ho, 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 ho. let's go. Someone finally picked up a high loss. Put a COD and a Thunderbolt on it. Call it a day. All right, that's a DOD once more. Every day we're seeing something new. And this might actually not even be a COD Thunderbelt high loss. This just, there's a chance it might actually just be full defense high loss. Just straight up. Straight up with how annoying he is. So with the way I'm seeing things, wait, is that a mid lane Esmeralda? It is. It is. Ah! Might even be a mid lane Ruby. I love this meta, bro. <laughs> Midnight, what are you doing? <laughs> Coach Mid, uh, here it is. Oh, and here it is oh, again. I hate to say it, but Reptar, look, there's three solid targets for the Lunox again. Look at the HP pools on the Ruby, the High Loss, and the Esmeralda. Yeah, the, the Lunox uh, looks, uh, she was happy in the last one. She looks way happier this time around, too. Sword and the Shield all over again. Hey, but it almost worked out for the Shield prior. So yeah. Maybe. Maybe. High Loss, Esme. Rome, mid, EXP, we shall see. Might even be a mid lane Ruby, as you mentioned, with the swap. Any last thing that you want to say before we go to the boys? Nothing is beyond C9 right now. Uh, my mind is blown. I just want to see some good MLBB. And good MLBB, I hope we get. That's it for us here. Casters, guys, what's going on? What y'all thinking? Wow, I'm, I'm thinking we're going to get some good MLBB. How about you? You like, you like the high lows pick? I like the high loss pick. I've been a fan of the horse. The horse. That's it. That's where. It is. That's it. I've been watching a lot of flight horse recently. Okay, I thought you were gonna say yeah. All right. Well, I thought there was more to the horse, but you know what? Let's jump into the game here once again. It's a best of three. 
spot for the semifinals for both these teams. Cloud9, after what happened in game one, they bring a very fun lineup, I'd say, uh, with this, especially the fact that you have a another debut hero pick with Zaya here on this high lowest pick. Oh, oh, good early poke, too. I mean, yeah. they're, they're going to have that. And of course, too, with Ashley here on this Ruby, a Ruby typically we don't see in the mid lane too often, but this is just that dynamic, you know, that C9 has brought to the table for MWI. The pressure here, though. Okay. Be careful. All right, she's fine. But I think one thing, too, you, you have to respect this damage from this Julian. I mean, Kill is also running the Warcry Emblem. And, you know, Julian already does quite a bit of damage alone. You, you pack in some extra percentage. Again, the knockup. Oh, the damage coming from Synchro. They might actually be going for this. She has to flicker. Decides, nah, not yet. Nicolette on the Ling, though. Trying to go for the invades already. Already ahead of Kiyoe, actually. Just in the first minute. But Kiyoe will be able to just pick up level four as well. But yeah, man, uh, like Leo said, now the Lunox gets a lot of value. Same goes for game number one, right? The Esmeralda, the Ruby, yeah. and the Hylos. I guess now Exia has a vengeance. So there's another way to actually turn the damage back around. In game one, it was the Bulwark. Now it's the vengeance. Yeah, and look at this. I mean, even the placements that we see from VSG, the way that they also calculated things in the previous game, very impressive. Again, you know, for, for a lot of people, they might not know this, but they actually boot camped, I believe it was in, in Bali, yeah. like a week before the tournament. And it shows them, you know, that, that experience that they gained, however long that was for that week. Whatever they managed to do is showing here in the tournament for MWI. And, you know, with the way that they're rotating, even with this lineup, I think, yeah, it's crucial. Oh, cool. Oh, that's the Chaos Bolt. You see the damage already earlier on. This is what I mentioned even in game one. I was like, man, you know, she does a lot of damage early on. What more when she gets that first or second item even? And they're going to keep them at bay here. They're really forcing them wow. out of the turtle pit. C9 can't even get close just yet, but they still might rely on Xia here with that high low. She has the ultimate available. It's everybody still available on it. And now Zion's gonna be isolated all alone. Gailey pops in the middle. Fury smacks the hammer down, picks up first blood. And now it's Minion. Bravest Fighter, that's a stun as well. Used up Jewel, able to purify out of the stun. Gale again on this Minotaur. Just disengaging, but VSG are really just capitalizing on the fundamentals that Cloud9 want to play with. They always position the turtle, and now they get punished. They get punished for even walking up to the bushes near the river. Yeah, it's almost like, uh, I don't know, hold on, Jewel. Is, she's gonna, is she going to be okay from this? I don't think so, man. Just a few more blades, one last shot oh. should do it. She gets the shielding. But look at the tank and the jungle, the turrets, Kiyoe diving in and hatch chain. That's the elephant to take Jewel down. <laughs> it is, and they're trying to make a play here on the bottom side. Not going to happen, but, you know, going back to it, it's like, you know, you want to see how are you going to utilize the Hylos pick. You want to kind of, I would say, almost better for this lineup to just drop that pathway down earlier, the Glorious Pathway, uh, and, and let it, you know, you get that speed boost or that reduced movement speed that you can work with, plus that heal, um, even the Vengeance. So they're going to force Rian wow. out of here. She actually decides to go for the Battle of Image in front of the Blazing Duet 2. That's the fadeaway, jumps oh. back towards the BMI. And Gale's right there to Good. get the Motivation Roar. Well played. Good timing. Well played, yeah, you're right, for VSG, able to make that move, and they're really good. This is what I was talking about earlier, man, the way that they rotate around the map and that they're there for those moments, those timings. VSG has that seem, uh, seemingly really good timing already. For Cloud9, it feels like they're still really trying to make this lineup that work, and it, now you already see VSG. Hold on. The chain into the chaos. Excite trying to run away with the glorious pathway. Oh. That's an Imapeta connecting on the two members, bringing them back under the turret. But Minion zoning Nicolette away with the bravest fighter. Kiyoe on the purple buff jewel, trying to look for an opening here. Nicolette gonna be zoned again. Ashley, no, I'm offended. That's a Minion's Fury connecting there, but the Tempest of Blades will be used up. Nicolette still isn't able to find the purple buff. It was Kiyoe, and she finds a kill on top of it all. This is what's tough, man. You get to a point if you're C9 to be like, all right, things are falling apart in the early game for us, and now. Our resource, our most valuable resource, mind you, for Nicolette is going to be focused on, put the pressure there, and you lose bodies for it. It's too expensive. Nice. It's too much to handle because with this kind of lineup, and especially having a Ling there, I mean, we saw the win percentage in the draft. It's not too good. And 25%. With 25%, another objective is going to get taken. So, And there's a reason. Oh, no. Oh, hold on. 
Again. Oh, the immobilization with the chain. The enhanced scythe. And then again, the roamer that's been killing. Where can they make a play for C9? Where can they find their own moment here? Because right now, that's what I was saying. You know, you just get to a point where you're so far behind and it's tough to, to find your, your winning condition at this point. Even early on already, Brilliant's going to be used under the turret, forcing them back. So VSG is just trying to brute force themselves even for these tier one turrets. And at this point, you kind of have to think, all right, for C9, what do we do? How do we get back in this game? Because obviously we have lost the early game. And at the same time, we have to protect this purple buff. And that's why you see VSG playing around that. You know, they see this wound and they continue pressing on it because that's all you have to do for VSG to delay it even further because eventually Cloud9 can farm up. But Zaya, well, there's Pathway with a Vengeance used up. They're trying to bait out as many resources as possible. Synchro dealing a lot of damage already. And Ashley already used up. I'm offended. Good now Panda, Panda goes for a trade up top. But might be cut off. Minute has a Bravest Fighter. Doesn't decide to use it. Panda, good positioning back again after getting that turret. All right, 3,000-ish gold is not anything too crazy. As long as Cloud9 doesn't lose any, you know, bodies here from this point on, they can farm up at least for Panda. She can do what she needs to do because you've only got that Berserker's Fury here for Nicolette. Panda has the Curse of Scythe working on her neck. War Axe there for Ashley. And that's the thing, man. It's just like itemization-wise, firepower-wise, it's not going to be there for a while. Even with the lineup that they already had, it wasn't going to be the case unless Nicolette had a great start, which is why we see these assassin junglers you know, play their part so well if they get that early lead. Look at this, Nicolette going to be forced even just to fight for these regular camps for her. And a lot of the times, too, now that you have Gaily picking up the Flask of the Oasis, it's even harder to get through that sustainability, to get through that motivational roar healing. And this is just going to be another turtle taken here. The chaos now, I mean, at this point, all the neutral objectives are just getting taken out so quick. So fast. The Julian in itself, you know, you can clear really fast with the Enhanced Scythe. On top of that, you have Synchro. Enhanced Chain to be used up onto Ashley there. Minus Fury again. Ooh. Gaily finding three. Even the Vengeance is not going to be enough. Now it's going to be Minden with a famous Fighter to the back line. Finding Panda with the last swing. And now it's Rian going to jewel down, running away real quick. Oh. With the last oh. skill one gets her. The act of thievery stealing away the lives of Cloud9. I'll take that stack. I'll take that kill, and they take everything in that exchange. VSG, I think at this point, they all have the birthday buff, man. They're, they're playing this game so well, so it's our perfectly. Birthday. It's our birthday <laughs> at this point. And, you know, when you're looking at this kind of, uh, again, they're just, they're just planting themselves in the jungle here for oh, Cloud9. No. What can you do? What more can you do aside from just look and have everything taken in front of your eyes? Panda does get a golden staff, but again, every time that this happens, you're looking at adding an extra minute to getting that playback potential from C9. Now, oh, hold on. Oh, Nicolette. Wait, you oh. gotta be careful. She walked into Dexter there. Oh, that oh, looked no. close. Gaily, though, rotating over. Finch poised by Nicolette. No one there to catch her, so it's a good assassination up top onto Rihanna as she gets out. It looked close. It looked really scary <laughs> as she walked over to Dexter, but. It's all good. They get something on the board, finally. At least they get on the board. Uh, good shot of a what's at stake there, right? The close-up of the keys that have been crushed Cameraman already man. for MWI. Uh, cameraman doing work there. But, you know, that's the thing, man. When you look at it, Cloud9, they did make a comeback in their tiebreaker yesterday. Now, can they do that here? Is that something that's possible in this game with this lineup? You have to start thinking about if they get to that mid-game, late-game transition and they get to the late game, what is, what is this lineup going to be able to do for them? I think even yet, they should just give up the first lore. They really shouldn't contest it because they're just not in position to go toe-to-toe -to -toe yet. I mean, even look at the, the level gaps across the lanes here. You know, at that point, too, you have to be very crucial. I mean, Jewel's only level 8 to Minun's at level 11. And even with an Esmeralda, you're not going to be really be able to be up front like you hope. So it's up to VSG. They might even just try to bait this out, you know, for C9 to have some form of confidence to see if they can turn things around. But honestly, for C9, they need to buy as much time as possible. Wait for that moment. Nicolette, another one to go on with the Lazy Duet. Now Rian able to get the solo this time around. Disaster for Cloud9. Minin 
Bravest Fighter, Glorious Pathway, placed down by Exia just to disengage. The Assassin lost in a 1v1. That's not good. Yep, Nicolette going down there, especially against the gold laner from VSJ, is just going to resort to a Lord secured, an objective secured. You know, again, she's really just trying to do what she can. That's you can't you can't count out the fact that Nicolette at this point, especially because she hasn't had a purple buff in a while, she's not gonna have the next one either. She's just trying to push the side lanes, trying to get something, because otherwise they're forced to get nothing. And for VSG, they're gonna continue to put the pressure here everywhere. I mean, again, Synchro getting that purple buff is gonna make things much worse. She's already got multiple items that she needs to tear through. The, the front line, I mean, what you can call it a front line from Cloud9 here. And as they get ready, Lord, it's down on the bottom side. They're going to keep Nicolette there, but VSG, I set here on these other lanes, especially in the mid. Nicolette sent down there without a purple buff. You can see the rest of the members already going to the mid lane, picking up the tier 2. Kiyoe wants to challenge Nicolette into a 1v1. It has Shane going to be used up there. Nicolette deciding to just finch poise out away from that Lord, but... VSG, they've always been really impressive with how they manipulate these waves. They let the bottom lane push by itself with the Lord, and they're just going to build up a big wave together with the mid lane. Luckily, Nicolette dealt with it a bit, right? It's taken out a half HP, so it might not be able to really crack this base or it open, but it will get the Holy Defense before even the next minute wave coming down. Exia again, even with the vengeance, gets melted down and plays into it once again as Kiyoe jumps in forward. A good falling star moon locking down another turn. The minion is still Aver Flicker out the safety. Enhanced sword there. They only lose the Minotaur. They trade it for the horse. One for one. Uh, a cow for a horse. A cow for a horse. You know, good a trade. bull for a horse. A bull for a horse. Sorry, yeah, a bull for a horse. Good trade there. Uh, but, you know, you're seeing it, man. And I, I would say, like, even for this... Okay, I'm offended. It's going to be used. Ash lane. Brilliant. I'm offended. Synchro just says, oh, okay. I see you guys are here, right? But uh, now, still, they're actually going to still force C9 to fight for this purple oh. buff. I don't think they're going to get it, though. They know the I'm offended has oh. gone. And they're not going to get it. Nicolette even utilizing... The Retribution. So this is a very hungry, a very starved, a very 25% win rate Ling. It's so tough to be in. I mean, even looking at the damage dealt, guys, you can already see how much of a disparity there is here in terms of fighting potential for Cloud9. Best thing they can do is stall things out as long as they can. We're talking nearly five plus minutes at this point to get the items that they need. Once they get to that point, then they can hope they can pull a defense off. I think one of the biggest problems, though, is, you know, when you're in the defense mode in your base, what's your clear speed look like? It's not it's not that great. No, you don't have that traditional mage uh, in the mid lane to help clear things out, especially with your marksman. And, you know, you have uh, it, it's all about time. It's all about carry. being able to clear things out. You got to carry. But, you know, you're there to shred a little bit. You know, the best thing you can do is shred down some of the minions. Well, let's see. Cloud9 already posturing up. Trying to go for perhaps just the pick off here. Whoever wants to try to 1v1 Nicolette, maybe it's not going to be a 1v1 this time right now with a Ruby down below. And it does seem like for PSG, they're just going to go straight for the Lord. They don't even care about the side lane anymore. They know it's just a tier one there. Yeah, Synchro. They, they trade it. They're going to use the Chaos. Minute jumps with the Bravest Fighter. They're going to be able to rush it down. Kiyoe fighting. Nicolette still jumping in. Minus Fury connecting on the two. Panda knocked up and obliterated again by Rian with the Blazing Duet. Two for zero. An enhanced Lord. 13 minutes in. It, it's looking brink. Oh. Yeah, it, it's it's grim here at this point. The STC replay, you saw they were off timing on this. They wanted to push that in the bottom lane, the tier one. But yeah, VSG doesn't care. They would rather get the Lord. And, you know, you were almost thinking, all right, maybe Nicolette could get there in time to try to do some miraculous steal with the Retribution. But they were just too late by a second or two. And taking a look even at the items, once again, look at the difference in gold here across the lanes. Oh, no. Even for that, Nicolette, she's going to get chased down. Doesn't have a purple buff, too. So they might just leave her to it, but they still have a Lord down in the bottom side. Oh, Minun knows. She's going to go ahead and stop Nicolette. Orange buff still there, too, but she's got to get back to the base here. She's got to help the team defend this. She is there in time, but now... Will they be able to even hold on to the base? We are going to be engaged upon now with one of the nature. Able to survive just a bit. Nicolette with an amazing assassination as Panda deals with the bottom lane. Exia pops in the pathway. Synchro baited out there. The chaos. Good start over the jewel. Still able to survive under the turret. They are able to defend, but they lose a base turret. 
Now another one in the mid lane with the Brilliant. It's going to be used up again. Panda still able to evade. Now an I'm offended. Brilliant Sing from all the way back. Four Panda to free hit. It's going to be Juwon in the midst of it all. Caught by the enhanced chain slash again. Picking up a killing spree. Kiyoe. The birthday girl walking forward. Another chain. That's a double. Looking for a triple right now as Exia tries to soak in enough damage. Another chain with the elephant coming up. But it's Heavenly Blade saves her. I'm offended. Bringing her back once again. Winner crown going to be used up by Kiyoe. Now another chain used up again. Oh. But finally, Nicolette finds the shutdown. Looking for a Go double for kill herself. Goes over to buy and Blade. Goes to the Finch Poise. Up top she goes to clear the wave. But look at the bottom wave. Minin on the base, trying to go for the crackdown. Exile gonna be knocked out, forced to use the vengeance now. And that's a fadeaway kill from Minin. It's just one versus two. Nicolette versus Minin and Kaylee, and she is able to delay for a bit. Is it enough time though? I mean, Jewel is up, but now Rion's here for the fight. Are they still gonna put the pressure on the base? It's gonna be tough. Again, Temple of Blades used up, and the Minus Fury he won't be dodged away from Blazing Duet. The fadeaway shots now as Panda pops over nature, comes back in with the light wheels, but it's not gonna be enough. Panda's gonna be slain. That's a triple Ashley trying to save the game, finding two. That's one more member minute on the base.